I want the viewer to look at my sculpture and see the human spirit come through to make other people feel something, to move people some way. I want that to all be encapsulated in the bronze. That's my ultimate goal. My mom had just started to pick up art again when I was around four years old. And I would sit on the floor and just draw with markers, pencils, and crayons, stuff like that. I just started to go at it, I loved it. He would draw like people. It wasn't just little stick figures, he drew people, and I encouraged Jamie to use my art supplies. I would buy him sketchbooks all the time. I'm an artist, so I recognize he had some talent at that young age. There were many times where I would finish a drawing and I would just hate it, and it wasn't what I wanted. So I just would crumple it and throw it away, and she would be digging it out of the trash can and, and flattening it out and saying, no, 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 it's perfect, I love it. She encouraged me a lot. I think that she felt like it was her job to nurture my beginnings. An artist looks at things with a different eye than most people do, and he's always had that ability since he was very young. I was a really shy kid, was quiet, and didn't play any sports or anything like that. I wanted to be out there and be social, but I was so afraid of rejection and afraid to be judged, I guess. So those are probably the times in my life when I cleaved to art more than ever. I got an eye-opening experience in first grade when I made a series of dinosaur drawings from a book. Not traced, but I copied them. My teacher then was amazed and she took all of my drawings and pasted them up all over the school. My parents sat me down, very formative experience in my mind, because they sat me down and said, you have a talent and you're special. I think in some ways it was kind of like Dumbo's magic feather, you know, like my parents said this is so, so I know it's so, and I had the confidence and the drive maybe changed the way I looked at my possibilities. I believed it in a way that was deeper than the average belief. From that point on, I knew I was going to be an artist, somehow, some way. Stab was a coal miner, and my family's all coal miners. So, you know, I guess you just expect your kids to do the same thing. He's a laborer, and he's made all of his life, all of his money from his muscles. And the idea of sitting at a table and drawing or painting, it didn't quite make sense to him. All through high school, we knew he was going to go to college to be an artist, but he wanted to be a painter. And that was a little worrisome because it's kind of hard to make a living as a painter. There was a little bit of a lack of respect that I felt. He may have completely disagreed with, with me, but uh, I felt there was a little bit of a dismissiveness. He was proud of me to go to college, you know, but he was a little bit out of his comfort zone, and therefore he was supportive, but not really into it. WV was the school I wanted to go to, and the, the facilities were really cool. I knew he had to have a college education, and I wanted him to do it. I didn't get that opportunity, and I wanted him to have it. I think she was living a little vicariously through me to see me go to these painting classes and drawing classes. I talked him into taking a pottery class because I wanted some pots. I was that same kid I was back in high school, very quiet. And Bob Anderson was the kind of guy who just really intimidated me, and he scared me to death. Intimidating, well, I, don't, I, I don't know why. <laughs> I think it was his, his goal, is to, find, to weed them out, you know, like find the weak people out there. And let them go do whatever they want to do, but ceramics was not for them. I remember the way he handled himself in class that he, he wasn't gonna be a potter. I, I knew that. When I first approached him and told him that I wanted to do sculpture, he 
didn't want to hear it. I just wanted to do something that was a little bit more like expressive and rough. The work that he did that impressed me the most in terms of him developing as a young person were these figurative busts, these heads. And it wasn't enough to do that. So he had to move on with these ideas about living quarters and houses and uh, trailers. They were birds that were in various states of flight and perching and things, and, and they were beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I never had to worry that he was going to get stumped for something to do. <laughs> but I did know that he wouldn't be a potter. Eventually, we, we were able to come to terms, and he was able to understand who I was, and, and I respect him a lot. He really taught me how to expect the best for myself and not accept anything less. I graduated in May of 1997, and I started to make contact with a foundry in Kingwood. They gave me a very generous opportunity to start doing some work in bronze. I've made reliefs for the World Golf Hall of Fame in Florida, for Monument Park at Yankee Stadium. I've done Halls of Fame for the University of Virginia, the Nextel Cup in California, the LA Coliseum Hall of Fame. Thousands of reliefs later, I feel like I've mastered relief. Immediately, I knew I needed to do it, not because I thought I was going to be the winner, but I knew I had to submit a design. When I found out that my design would be on the quarter, I think I was a little bit numb. Everybody around us really thought it was great thing that he, he won this contest and designed the state quarter. He got a lot of publicity for that quarter, a ton of publicity. I mean, for a few years there, it was like celebrity time. I could see the writing on the wall, maybe a little bit of something big that was going to happen or big that was happening that was almost kind of beyond me. I saw possibilities that weren't there before. And I think that with projects like the Jerry West statue, the West Virginia Quarter played a huge role in determining whether I got that project or not. He was in competition with several other artists. I was up against six people, uh, six other artists in that competition, and some of them were from out of state, and I was aware of their work already. As far as track record, they outclassed me completely. But I brought a model, and I think that helped convince them that I could pull it off. The Jerry West statue was the first larger-than-life statue that I had made. It was the first statue of any scale that I had made. The photo that WVU chose for the Jerry West statue was a press photo, pretty much all that existed from that time. But it wasn't an extremely athletic pose. It was Jerry on one foot, dribbling the ball, but you could tell there wasn't really a lot of intensity there. So I took that photograph and injected life into it. You know, it was everything I dreamed it would be. It was the first large-scale bronze I'd ever made, and I knew it would not be the last. But I didn't get another large-scale bronze project for years. I had kind of let some of my other clients slide. It was a very humbling moment, and I had to repair a lot of bridges. And I created a new business with my business partner, Jeff Edwards. What I saw in Jamie was a person who's passionate about every aspect of art and being creative. For him, it was proving himself more than it was one time. I mean, the Jerry West was a beautiful piece of art, but um, you have to have a body of work, and he didn't have it. We've been very successful in allowing me to do what I do best and not do all the accounting, the logistics of it, and just be creative. I can't say enough about what a powerful effect that had on my career.
I always had this feeling that by doing music, I was taking away from sculpture or taking away from painting. Or by doing painting, I was taking away from sculpture, taking away from music. And I couldn't be all three at once because I would just be watering down everything. But when I went to Rome, I realized that all these sculptors, all these heroes of mine, also painted. And they also composed music. And I looked at my own life and, you know, my music is not on the level of their music, neither is my sculpture, neither are my paintings, but I have the same tendencies. And I have to accept those tendencies and, and not deny them. And I've found this year that the more music I write, the more creative I get with painting, the more creative I get with sculpture. By shutting one off, you actually are taking away from this creative pool that feeds the others too. This year is the most creative year of my life. I've, I've really just opened up all the taps of creativity. What Jamie's doing has a far-reaching legacy, not only as a business person, but as a West Virginian. It's gonna be celebrated for a long time. That quarter design was in 05, and his, his dad passed away in 08. So he was able to see the Jerry West statue. He helped me install the Jerry West statue. It's something really meaningful to me, I'll never forget. He was just diagnosed at that time. So he was still healthy and active. We were using torches to melt out the holes that were filled up with ice. He's there with, with me. To see that statue, you know, that was like pretty amazing to see that he was able to, to do that for both of us. It took a year to make it, so it was a whole year of seeing it be made. And it makes me a little bit emotional. My dad had lung cancer and we, he fought it for several months, and really aggressively. I didn't have to ask, I already knew that he was so proud of me at that point. But we did talk a little bit about it and there was no doubt in my mind afterwards how he felt about me and how proud he was. I've thought often about what it, what it is that drives me to make art. I think part of it is just to, to please other people, is to make, to make other people smile or, or feel something or laugh or cry or something, to move people some way. Mm -hmm.